Welcome. We have Tom Heist of the Heist Insurance Company and Ken Fowler of New Jersey Realty, and they're going to tell us a little bit about the new Ocean City flood maps and what it means for us property owners. Tom, what's a good word? Good morning. Well, there's a lot going on. The new maps were just released in Atlanta County about a month ago and Cape May County this past week. And I think everyone's very pleased with the outcome of the maps. Certainly, the maps that were released in the early part of the winter were a little bit scary. There was a, a, a big V zone. And for those of you who don't know what a V zone is, uh, the requirement is that homes are much higher off the ground and uh, the premiums are a lot more expensive. So with the new maps, most of the communities are in the A zone. The premiums are a lot less. The foundation requirement is just a block foundation, and I think everyone is very, very happy. That's great news. That's what we've all been waiting for. Now, how do you think this is going to affect the home values in Ocean City? I think the home values are going to skyrocket. I think a lot of people have been sitting on the fence. There's certainly a lot of pent-up buyers that have been waiting to, to buy real estate, find out how the new maps are, were going to be released. And, and I, I truly believe Ocean City is well positioned to have a great real estate year. How do you know whether you are going to be forced to lift your house? You see these weird looking houses up in the air. The people who are raising their homes now did it because of the early maps. The early maps said that a, a good portion of the island, as much as 20, 25 percent, were going to be in the V zone. And so the maps today are really only affect construction. So everyone that is raising their homes that high, we're doing it to comply with the map that was released in January. With the new map, that height requirement is no longer necessary. So people uh, that did it were just anxious to rebuild or, or build new. And if you wanted to build during that, this time period, up until last week, or early this week, you had to build to that high level. But now with the new maps, that height requirement is no longer necessary. Now those people will pay less for insurance because generally the higher your structure is off the ground, the lower your premium. So if I'm showing my buyers properties in Ocean City, my best advice to them would be to buy properties that are the most elevated? Yes, absolutely. Um, as a rule of thumb, the older homes in town, and when, when I say old, I say older than 1975 because prior to 75, there was no height requirement. You could build on the ground. Uh, the flood program was enacted, and in 1975, on January 1, they said that all homes had to meet a certain height elevation. So we call that, that date line a pre-firm or post-firm. Firm is, stands for flood insurance rate map. So all the homes that are post-firm, built after January 1, 75, are built high enough and really receive much lower premiums than the people who had a home built prior to January 1, 75. Now my home was in the dreaded V zone, and it just came out to the A zone. Um, the elevation is 10 and a half feet, but the new elevation, according to the new guidelines, is 11 feet. Well, I just have to pay a little bit more than normal or how, how does it work? Yes, yes. There's a, there's a couple things going on. With First of all, the maps only affect construction today. Uh, when they're formally adopted, and we guess that that will happen around October 1st of next year, so October 1st, 2014, when the maps are formally adopted, it will begin to affect the cost of insurance. Today it's just they're for construction, in the future for insurance. But with the adoption of the new maps, FEMA is actually using a new way to measure elevation. And without getting into a lot of fancy acronyms, the old way uh, was called NGVD29. Just remember, 1929, they came up with an elevation above sea level. So if you were at, at, in a base zone of 10, you were essentially 10 feet above sea level. The new way is called 1988 datum, NAVD 88, and that elevation is really determined with satellite imagery and a lot of fancy uh, tools. And the basic thing that you need to remember is in the old days, there was a zero somewhere. If there's a 10, there's a zero as well. And the new zero that FEMA is using on their maps 
is somewhere between 12 and 15 inches higher than the old zero. Interesting. Okay? So if you're looking at your elevation certificate and then comparing it to the new map, you have to understand that there's a data conversion that has to take place as well. And really, it's best for your surveyor or a professional, an insurance professional, to, to, to guide you along and not just assume that because you were in a nine foot elevation zone before and the new map is nine, that it's the same place. The new nine is probably more equivalent to the old 10 or maybe even a little bit higher. What I understand is that the 1988 datum, uh, you take your f flood elevation and you subtract one foot and three inches, but they round up, so yes. it's really just one foot. So if you were at 10 feet, you're now at nine feet. Correct, correct. Um, but really, that's just for Ocean City. Um, as you head south, it's a little bit more. It might be pushing uh, 16 inches. As you go north towards Ventnor and Atlantic City, it might be a little less. It could be 13 inches or 14 inches. So it, the 15 inches that we're talking about in Ocean City might not apply to other communities. And that's why it's really best to have a surveyor go out and look at your particular property and understand what your need is uh, in that zone, in your neighborhood. What should the, um, a new homeowner expect or an existing homeowner expect in the future as far as cost for flood insurance? Everyone who has a home built after 75, they're the post-firm homes, they're not subsidized. So FEMA is not coming back to those homeowners and saying, you've been part of the, the problem. It, for those that don't know, FEMA was in the hole about 20 billion before Superstorm Sandy even hit. Uh, we are guessing Sandy is going to be somewhere between a seven and $10 billion event. So FEMA is going to be pushing $30 billion in the hole. Congress knew that and enacted what's called Bigger Waters Flood Reform back on July 6th of 2012, more than a year ago. This flood reform was taking place even before Superstorm Sandy hit. So the older homes built before 75 are the subsidized properties, and FEMA is ending the subsidies for the subsidized properties. When are they going to end that? Well, if for the, the owners of property before Bigger Waters was enacted in July, um, their phase-in is going to be over a, a series of years uh, if you're a secondary owner. It's a series of years. If you're a primary owner, you will have no really substantial premium difference until the map changes. And then they're going to be introducing new rates associated with the maps. But we're today, we're focused for the new buyer. We're talking about what the new buyer should see. Mm -hmm. And anyone that bought a new property after Bigger Waters was passed, back in July of last year, they're going to see what we call true risk rates and they, those rates will begin to be phased in October 1 of this year. So, anyone who bought a home between July of last year and October of this year will need to supply an elevation certificate in, before their, their first renewal after this October. It's a little confusing, but if you bought a home during this, we'll call corridor period, you have to supply an elevation certificate, certificate to your insurance agent and then they will send it into the carrier and send you a bill, which could be higher than the old bill. But again, it's important, this only affects the pre-firm properties. The post-firm properties are not subsidized and will get no major increases. We're seeing the annual increases somewhere between 8 and 12% with the flood program, not for subsidized properties. Subsidized properties will pay as much as 25% more. Ocean City doesn't have a lot of pre-firm homes left. Over the years, we've seen a lot of reconstruction, a lot of rebuilding. All those homes meet the requirement today. And those that were severely flooded, uh, some of them got additional money from FEMA to elevate their homes. So they're going to comply. And uh, there's repetitive loss properties. And those property owners are going to be kind of forced to, to elevate. At the end of the day, you're going to have homes that are higher off the ground, they're going to pay less money for insurance, and hopefully they'll become more marketable. Looks like they're going to be lined up around the block to buy them again. <laughs>
I got to ask one devil's advocate question. Let's say your flood elevation certificate is nine feet and you're in the A zone and that on the map says nine feet. Right. What does that mean? Because I thought there was something a few months ago about we, you had to elevate it to three feet above the nine feet. Right. Well, Ocean City has what's called freeboard. So for all new construction, they're requiring an additional two feet higher than the FEMA requirement if you are elevating a damaged home or building new. So FEMA could say you're in a 10-foot zone. Ocean City adopted a plus two higher than the base flood. So Ocean City says you need to build to 12, not 10, even though 10 is the flood zone. Okay, if you're in a V zone, it's as high as three feet higher than what is the, the base flood zone in that area. Now, I understand that, that Ocean City gets a pretty um, good discount for flood insurance because of our dune system and our bulkheads and... Great like lead-in, Ken, and that's exactly why Ocean City adopted the free board, because FEMA gives every community discounts for all policyholders um, based upon activities that the community does to mitigate future flood damage. The free board is one piece of that puzzle. The dune system, evacuation plans, uh, disseminating public information, uh, evacuation routes, these are all pieces to enable Ocean City and similar communities to get uh, discounts. If you look at the damage to Ocean City, the least damage was where the dunes were substantial in the middle of the island. Is the government of Ocean City committed to really working on building up our dune system? Because it seems to me that's vital. Well, I can't answer for the city of Ocean City, but my feeling is that all of the community leaders know that the dunes saved the town. And it's not just Ocean City. As I drove up uh, north and saw other towns that experienced damage, the damage was in the areas where there was a poor uh, dune management system. So I think all of the community leaders understand the importance of maintaining a strong dune system to reduce future damage. It's really not just about having a good view anymore. I think in the old days there was a debate over I'm losing my view because of the dunes, but certainly today it's not about one person's view, it's about everyone's flood premiums and everyone's damage, and I think that is taking precedent over the old perspective. I think we'll all agree that when you have a 15 or 20 foot dune out there and a 15 or 20 foot wave coming in and it's hitting the dune before it hits the beachfront properties, I think we're all thankful that we had those dunes and yes it washed the sand from the dunes into the streets but it still saved our properties. Certainly better than the alternative. It sure is. I agree. Thanks very much, Tom. I appreciate it. How can people reach you for any further questions? Ken, it's my pleasure. We're a locally owned business. We have offices in Ocean City and Margate. You can call us at 399-0655 or email me at theist at heistinsurance.com. And uh, very uh, active in the community. So if you see me on the street, please feel free to ask me any questions. Okay, great, Tom. I'm Ken Fowler from NJ Realty. Thanks for joining us. Go out there and seize the day.